Well, first of all, thank you all for being here. This is a good news story today we're going to talk about, so um, that's some good news. Um, and to the um, asphalt community in Ohio who are here, the folks here from Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, Central Ohio, Eastern Ohio, I didn't see. Anybody from Eastern Ohio? Well, you pave in Eastern Ohio anyway. <laughs> so the whole state's represented here, and uh, this is one of the biggest industries in the state of Ohio, and it's an industry that is incredibly important to our economy, uh, employs well over 6,000 people. Um, so in my role as U.S. Senator, I've been involved in a number of issues that relate to their business, directly or indirectly. Uh, one that's direct, of course, is the highway bill. The highway bill uh, that is in place now is just a two-year bill. It ends at the end of 2014. So one thing we talked about today was how to get some longer-term predictability on the highway bill, which I support. Uh, we also have talked about government regulations and how that impacts um, what these guys do every day because there are a lot of federal regulations and federal mandates that increase the cost of paving the road. Um, my own view is that the money we send out of the state of Ohio and our gas tax ought to stay in Ohio. Ohio is a donor state, meaning we only get about 91 cents back of every dollar we send to Washington. And it comes back from Washington to us not only with fewer uh, dollars and cents, but also with more regulations and more mandates. So uh, I had an amendment to the highway bill that did not pass, but it would say that Ohio and other states should be able to keep their gas tax here. We've got a good system here to prioritize roads and bridges, and bike trails and so on. And that would save a lot of the funds and frankly would enable us to do, uh, we think, about 25% more in terms of the kind of road work that, that these guys do all over the state. We also talked about the industry, and it's really changed dramatically. Um, the first day we get back into session, my legislation on energy efficiency will be up before the United States Senate, hoping that will pass. It got out of committee 19 to 3. But here we see energy efficiency at work, and they're doing it every day. So what we're seeing behind us here is now this company and other companies in Ohio are using recycled materials, they're using recycled asphalt pavement. Uh, so when you see a road being uh, torn up to prepare for a new road, they're taking that recycled material and putting it back into the asphalt. And we just saw some of that, some of it's on my hands, in fact. And that's about 25, 26% of the asphalt that's being put down is recycled. Second, they recycle shingles, so asphalt shingles are used. We saw some of that uh, here today. The asphalt shingles go back into the process uh, and have a high content uh, of asphalt in them. And, and then they're also using this new technology called warm mix, which requires less energy to be used. So maybe 30, 40 percent less energy, and that's what we've seen here today. Uh, the warm mix technology that's now being used a lot in Ohio. I commend the Ohio Department of Transportation for encouraging that. Some states are not encouraging it. We want to do it in Ohio. It helps reduce the cost, but very importantly, it helps reduce the energy use. So it's about energy efficiency. And then finally, I'll say here, and at a lot of plants uh, we'll see around the state of Ohio, they're now using natural gas to heat the material, which is a good thing because it's lower emissions than the oil that used to be used, and also because we got a lot of natural gas here in Ohio, so it's a, it's a good source for them. It helps keep their costs down. So there's a lot of good news stories here. We're standing underneath a, uh, a gold lead certified roof with uh, solar panels, and uh, so this little office here is an example of the kind of energy efficiency that they're trying to achieve in the business generally. And I commend them for that and look forward to working with them going forward on reducing the regulations, ensuring that there's more predictability and certainty going forward, ensuring that Washington's creating an environment for success, meaning to be sure that business people like these people are able to hire more people and we're able to keep our infrastructure needs up. By doing the deferred maintenance that you see being done on 275 or right now only a couple miles from here, you reduce the cost over time rather than allowing our roads and bridges to crumble and then it's much more expensive to rebuild them. So that's one thing that we're focused on uh, is how to ensure that we have adequate funding to keep this deferred maintenance uh, going so that there are lower costs to the taxpayer over time. With that, I'll open up to your questions or comments on anything. John. Just have nothing to do with